three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, days, and gays. This is the real pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter. Here, hope you're all having a great night, day, weekend, whenever you're checking this out. Uh, I am really excited to have a uh, writer, producer, director uh, Susan Stern with me today. Susan, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Joshua. How you doing? I'm I'm really good. It's almost Friday, so that's always a, <laughs> that always makes it a little better. Um, so I just uh, watched uh, this last week, uh, Barbie Nation, and on the authorized tour because uh, I was just really curious, just from the trailer I saw. And so to kind of just dive right in, why take on this project as far as uh, Barbie, as far as the subject matter? Well, Barbie. I think Barbie is this amazing tool. She's like, for children, she's this doorway into adulthood to act out all their fantasies. For adults, it's a doorway back into childhood to Hmm. figure out what that is again. And uh, so I think it's just powerful. Was there any, how do I put this? Because Barbie is such a part of, American culture, obviously, no matter what avenue you kind of took, you were going to get some pushback from fill in the blank. Was there any hesitation on that aspect as far as this overtaking or? Yeah, that's an interesting question. You know, pushback from fill in the blank from anybody. Um, When I first approached Mattel and I made this uh, first 25 years ago, uh, they said, uh, no, uh, not only are we not going to make a film about Barbie, they were opposed to that. And you're not going to make one either, you know, but things went on and actually they ended up totally opening up to me. And of course, now they're making their first live action film about Barbie. So they're there was pushback from them. I got pushback from feminists, and I consider myself a feminist. People didn't think I was hard enough on Barbie. It's like, uh, well, wait a minute. You know, she's a little plastic toy. Uh, she's not that tough. Um, this is not about this little plastic toy. It's about what we bring to it, and we bring all sorts of stuff to it, you know, whether it's not feminist enough or, you know, there were, when I first tried to sell the film, I went out to one company, and they said, well, um, you can have one gay man in there, but not two. You got to take wow. out one of those gay men. You know, that's too much. And then, you know, but that just made me, you know, get down and dirty. As you know, Barbie Nation has people doing S&M Barbies. Uh, we have the infamous Barbie X-ray. So <laughs> Yeah, um, that was... <laughs> That was that was something that I actually went, oh wow, okay. <laughs> was not expecting that. Yeah. Um I'm happy you brought up the fact that you're a feminist because as a person of color, I always get into the arguments of is this black enough? Does this talk about our struggle enough? And I feel like with feminism, it's a constant moving target and there's really not a blanket like this is always correct. I feel like that's such a conversation that people don't really want to delve into which is why i think you get into trouble because people don't actually want to talk about the subject they just want to feign outrage a lot of the time as far as you taking this on and i'll admit i was kind of conflicted watching this because seeing so many people talk about what barbie meant to them i was like that's really sweet like i i really actually appreciate what you know like what this plastic doll meant to so many people but at the same time um, not to spoil too much, but there's a woman in the documentary who talks about uh, being an art student and the struggle she went through because of the unattainable beauty she felt looking at uh, Barbie. Where do you kind of find that middle ground between, to your point, of like addressing the potential pitfalls and yet celebrating like what the doll means? Yeah, that's a great question. You've said six things I want to respond to. (laughs) Um, I guess, you know, my take is I'm a big talker. Uh, The film was inspired by my daughter and the way she played Barbie. And my feeling is 
media literacy. You know, I started training my kid who's in the film, Nora in the film with her best friend at the age of two, like watch things, talk about them. Let's dissect things. Nothing can hurt you too bad. Well, it can, but (laughs) (laughs) okay, let's not go there. Um, If we can talk about it. And that's the way I feel about the, all the issues it brings up about gender and body image. And I'm glad you mentioned race because One of my lifetime regrets is, though, there's a section that is now in the 20th anniversary director's cut that was not in the original film, though it was filmed back in 1998, which is the Black Barbie section. And um, we filmed it. I actually got really involved in researching the history of Black dolls. And we felt like the piece we had, it wasn't big enough. We couldn't do justice to the incredible story of Black Dolls and the incredible issue of self-image and how people of color have suffered by not seeing themselves in doll and yes. other things. So it fell out of the movie. Um, but now there is a new documentary, Black Barbie, that's going through its festival run. I saw it. It's incredible. It oh, wow. Okay. I'll have to make a note of that. You got to check that out. Google it. And these three films should be seen together, Uh, Greta Gerwig's Barbie, Barbie Nation, and Black Barbie, because they're not about Barbie. They're about our culture. And and the doll, this doll is an incredible lens, more than anything I know of, that can really lead us to have conversations about these things. And we're not going to all agree, but at least we can talk to each other. Yeah. Um. What, so, I mean, to, to date myself a little bit here, I think the first black doll I remember seeing were, uh, oh, God, were the, uh, like, the My Buddy dolls. I think that was the first thing I remember from, like, 80, oh, that was, like, 90, 90, 91, something like that. Like, but but as a kid, that was such a, like, whoa, it looks it, it looks somewhat like, like, like me, and that, and that being such a big deal. Um, From your perspective, because I do... I do think there is a conversation about the beauty aspect of Barbie, but one thing I have to give Mattel credit for is that there's definitely been a lot more inclusion as far as the types of Barbies, like as the brand has continued to evolve and what have you. Like, I I think I saw last year, uh, there was a Barbie for the first time, like a hearing aid, which is something that I went, I, I, I was like, wow, that's, that's a big, you know, that's a big deal. And, and I think you're very, um, balanced as far as like the size that you're presenting which i think is really hard to do for documentary so i give you a lot of credit for that um talk to me about talking about um ruth handler because obviously there's like a corporate aspect to like let's like let's push these dolls you know kids will love them da, 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 da. but i found myself feeling more sympathetic to ruth as the documentary went on, like kind of talk to me about how you portrayed her and like kind of her story. Yeah. Ruth was an incredible person and I was very lucky to get the interview with her. I had incredible reporters karma in this film. Like I could talk about a lot of things, but one was that I, I couldn't get an interview with Ruth Handler. I was nobody. I went to the Mattel convention. They said, well, you know, got no time for you. I said, well, can I like just follow her between interviews? I'll just walk next to her with the camera person. They said, okay. Then there was a cancellation, so I got the interview. Nice. I get it off with Ruth. She invited me back to her house. I met her husband. She brought in her daughter, who Barbie is named after. She gave me access to the family photos. She was an incredible force and a, and a real pioneer in women in business. I found out in the Black Barbie documentary that assistance she also gave to Shindana Toys, uh, which was a company that came out of the Watts riots and made some of the first Black Dolls and other oh, things wow. she personally did um, that were very generous. Uh, Elliot Handler's also an incredible person. We have a little bit in Black Barbie, his designs. He he made Hot Wheels for the boys in the audience. He invented okay. that. But he also was one of the first designers in the world to use Lucite, which was a new substance, beautiful, back in the 50s to make um, beautiful gift wares. And they're shown in Barbie Nations, his lamps and his trays and things like that. And they were an incredible power couple. He was really the creative person and she was the business person. Yeah, I mean, having her talk about her story, and I, I, I don't want to spoil at the end, but something you kind of put on the epilogue at the very end was something I went 
that's really cool. Like it was such a like that was such a nice surprise. So I really appreciate that you put that in there because you could have left that off. But I think that's a great exclamation point for where this uh, for where this ends up. Um, yeah. As far as <laughs> as far as like the kink aspects and everything, I found it really. <laughs> I can't think of another word, vile, the way that Mattel was like, oh, you're doing this with our Barbies. You know, we're going to sue, we're going to sue you into oblivion, potentially. Kind of talk to me about the, I mean, because you talked about how you were having trouble trying to even get this documentary made. Kind of talk to me about that legal aspect of how Mattel kind of took a, not kind of, took a pretty gross approach to like this creativity to these people who are buying their dolls. Yeah, the Barbie Nation the documentary, and I'm going to ask you, I hope to um, include BarbieNation.com link somewhere because we're trying to build up uh, that connection. But um, yeah, my documentary, Barbie Nation, documents how Mattel sued and threatened to sue people that were doing satires of the Barbie doll. Now, Mattel lost in the courts, uh, so they learned you can't do that. I've suddenly been thinking about the new Supreme Court and... You know, whether yeah. um, journalists are going to be as protected as they were in the past. But I think Mattel got hipper is one of the things. And this film with Greg Gerwig shows that they finally realized that, you know, they can't like keep it all to themselves. They have to go a little bit more with the flow of popular culture. In, in terms, since you touched on it, I'll bring it up as far as the Supreme Court aspect. And I've on my show, I've ranted a lot about the Supreme Court and so, and the several very stupid decisions that have been made over the last four years, but that's a whole other thing. As a journalist, as a content creator, as as a director, is there anything that, how do I put this? Is there any hesitancy on what subjects you're tackling moving forward because of that? Because I'll be the first to admit, like, you know, there are certain subjects where I'm like, oh God, I have to talk about this. But, mm -hmm. but, but there is still that, little voice in the back of my head sometimes that goes oh you could piss off a b and c and is that worth it so mm. how do you kind of draw that line because i feel like this whole documentary not intended to piss people off but i think there, there's a moment in particular where it talks about the feminine aspect of it and it felt <sighs> there's this way that a man and i'm blanking on his name but the way that he responds to the concept of barbie that i went oh, you're projecting women getting any sort of leeway, period, on this doll. And it was it was a really disturbing, quick moment that I went, mm -hmm. society-wise, I find it fascinating that all of this, all of these conversations that should be, we should be having of ourselves are being projected on this doll because I think society is too lazy to have these conversations at points. So... I found, mm -hmm. I found it really interesting the way you presented that. But sorry, to go back to my original <laughs> question. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any hesitancy as far as like some of the subjects you're tackling at this point? Um, good question. And I think you're right about people projecting so much onto the doll. Uh, and I think that's what makes it fascinating. Um, I don't feel you know, personally so afraid of the court. Um, I was going to say we're safer in the U.S., from our fellow citizens, we have been then some places, you know, I've been reading a lot about Iran recently, but, uh, you know, we're also not safe. Um, there's a scene in Barbie Nation of an art Barbie that was painted gold and nailed to a cross. I yeah. thought about, I had, I cut that into the trailer and then I was awake at night thinking, you know, there are certain of my fellow citizens that might actually try to come to kill me um, if I put that in the trailer so maybe i won't hmm. um two more questions for you um in particular I, I think this i already i'm buying my tickets for barbie this weekend i'm going for a group of friends i'm really excited to see what yeah. what that movie even you know looks like i think greta gerwig is a brilliant 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 director and i can't wait to see what she brings to it uh, as far as a message for people to kind of take away from this. Is there any singular message that you'd kind of want the viewer to take away after, after watching this? After watching Barbie nation? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you said something about Barbie nation that 
I really feel watching it again now. There's a sweetness there. There's just such a sweetness about people taking, as I say in the film, the most manufactured of things and making a life that is unique, that people that we can still do this. And we need to be able to do this more and more. I mean, as AI takes over, what do we have besides yeah. our fantasies and our mistakes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, and our imagination. That's what we have. That's what remains of being human. And I feel like Barbie Nation really shows that. And I feel like to the extent that there's excitement around uh, Greta Gerwig's Barbie, that's what it's about, too. It's about actually watching Gerwig and all those people take this dead plastic doll and make <laughs> something unique. I love that. And then uh, last question I have for you. What was the biggest, or if you have a couple examples, what was your biggest uh, surprise that you learned as you were like putting this documentary together? Wow. Um, I don't know. That's a hard question. It was all a surprise. It was all like this unraveling story, just the depth of it. How many people? It wasn't so much that people did S&M play with Barbie. It was there were so many people yeah. that did different <laughs> things with it. So um, that the community was so big. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll say for me, the the Barbie art show caught me so off guard. I was not expecting that at all. Like I, I have friends that have been obsessed with Barbie. So like the conventions weren't a, weren't a big surprise. Um, but seeing that type of Barbie art, I was like, wow, this is actually really like really creative. I was like, a lot of, like, I was like these people are putting in time and I appreciate that. So, yeah. yeah so for me, I'd say that would probably be my biggest surprise. Um, yeah. Um, thank you so much, Susan. For, for taking time to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, can you please tell people where they can find this documentary, where they can find you, all that fun stuff? Yes, thank you so much. Um, please go to barbienation.com and give us your Barbie story. We want to post them on the website. We want to be in touch with you. And it Barbie Nation will be coming out June 27th on Amazon, on um, Google Play, and on Apple iTunes. We'll see you there. Perfect, Susan. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me for today. Um, can't wait to see what you do next. And please have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your weekend. You too, Dasha. Take care. Bye-bye.